Welcome to Veterans Archives, where we preserve the stories of our nation's heroes in their own words and their own voices. Uh, today is Wednesday, October 16th, 2024, and we're speaking with Dick Spiegel, who right. served in the United States Army. Right. All right. Well, good afternoon, Dick. It's great to see you. Thank you. And thank you for having us here in your home. Um, we'll start out real simple, actually. When and where were you born? I was born in Highland Park, Michigan, mm -hmm. February the 27th, 1939. Okay. And now, did you grow up there? I grew up in Hamtramck, the Polish settlement, in, which is now probably more Arab or whatever. Yeah. But that, that was the largest Polish community in the United States. And when did you move to Hamtramck? My mother and father lived there, you uh -huh. know, and uh, they rented a house with uh, my grandfather and grandmother. And I stayed there until I went into the service. And uh, after getting married and moving back, never went back to Hamtramck. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about your childhood. Um, what was it like to, to grow up in Hamtramck as a kid? It was great. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Polish people are very proud individuals. The homes are all well kept, you know, close knit in their organizations and things like that. Uh, in Hamtramck, where we lived, we could walk from uh, my home, well, actually, my parents' home, to uh, Joseph Campo, which was a major, major street. You had everything there that you might want. Okay. Did you have brothers and sisters? I have one sister. Okay. And that was it. All right. Is she older or younger? She's younger. Okay. So was she she was the baby of the family then? Yeah. Okay. And um, you know, growing up, so how far apart in age were you? Pardon? How far apart in age were you? How much older were you than your sister? I'm 86. She was born in 1941, so well, a couple years. A couple years. Okay. What are some things you remember about her as a as a child? Any like favorite memories? Sorry to say, she was always a little smarter than what I was in high school. Mm -hmm. we were b uh, both uh, raised in a Catholic uh, home. Went to a Catholic high school, and uh, yeah, she made the honor roll. Whereas I didn't. You okay. Know, but, uh, yeah. But it was great. And what did, what did your parents do? Oh. Uh, my dad started off as a auto worker at Chevy Gear and Axle. Uh, after several strikes and things like that, worked in a small jobbing shop. From there, uh, his sister got him a job or an appointment for a job. What's well, a school system in Hamtramck? Okay. And he retired as a bus driver. Really? Right. Okay. Uh, my mother was a stay-at-home mom, but she would occasionally uh, uh, clean. There was a, a small, I think it was a jobbing shop or whatever, just a supplementing income, mm -hmm. but like that. She was a great mom. So, what are so what what would be like a favorite memory of your mother? Love to cook, love to cook. Uh, she wasn't too much into the gardening and things like that, but I mean, she could cook. She did, uh, not needlepoint, I think it's called cross padding or something like yeah. crosses and things like that. Uh -huh. And uh, that was about it. We never had anything that we would uh, want. Mom always made sure that we had things that was okay. it. Like I say, my my father worked as a uh, bus driver, I remember him. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, uh, playing ball in the alley, playing catch, you know, and things like that. He'd take me uh, fishing on uh, Belial, out to Algonac, things like that. And again, you know, it was memories that I still have. Yeah, good memories too, it sounds so like. I, well, that's good. Well, what about school? What was school like for you? I went to a Catholic uh, grade school, uh, Queen of Apostles in Hantramic, 
from there uh, went to St. Florian's, which is no longer in Hamtramck, but that was a, a Catholic high school. Took mm -hmm. all the, uh, which would now be uh, college prep courses and uh, graduated, not uh, with, uh, I couldn't say with honors, I graduated, you know, with Sam, I wasn't a valedictorian or anything like that, but, you know. Respectable grades anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I maintained my grades, you know, and all that. I couldn't mm -hmm. compete with my sister, but I mean, you know, that was it. Yeah. Did you play any sports at all in school? We played intramural basketball. My mom didn't want me to play football. She always afraid that I'd get hurt, mm -hmm. and I respected my mom's wishes. Yeah. So how'd you like basketball? Were you good at it? Uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. You know, mm -hmm. we'd go out and we could play uh, four corners down the street. And then, uh, you know, the gym was open a couple days a week. We'd play after school, a lot of basketball. Mm -hmm. Some some baseball, but that was about it. Okay. I do have to ask, because it's Hamtramck, and I, I hear this all the time, the food there must have been amazing. Oh, is it? Till this day, I mean, I can't find a Polish restaurant that they had over there. There's one that was called uh, Under the Eagle. Mm -hmm. There was a uh, another one called uh, Zosha's. There was, oh, the infamous uh, Nicholas. And the one that we would call the Cooperative Russian Restaurant. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that was the only place that you could the Russian descents could go on you to Pravda magazine. Okay. <laughs> what's, so if you, if, if, what's one of the Polish foods that you like, what's your favorite? Or do you have a favorite? <laughs> Not a favorite. I mean, I, I, mom was always, you know, she'd put it on a plate and all thing like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love my sauerkraut and neck bones. Uh, in fact, I'm going to be making it for Brian, uh, sauerkraut, smoked sausage, and boiled potatoes. Oh, that sounds, that just sounds amazing. <laughs> and it's simple food. Yes. I mean, it's not po complicated. Polish food was always simple. You uh -huh. know, you had your uh, pork chops, you had chicken, chicken soup. Uh, another delicacy was uh, pickled pig's feet. Okay. You know, I didn't realize that was Polish. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, Polish, German, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, we all had it. Right. And then uh, the other one, just thinking, I know my lovely wife doesn't like it that much. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Polish people had a version of the Bosch. Ours was served, that was with beets. Uh huh. And it was served warm over potatoes. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because it's normally cold, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, Russian is cold. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, and I, I think with beets, either you like beets or you don't like beets. Yeah, I right? love beets. I, I'll eat. I'll eat beets all day long. My wife says they taste like dirt. So, <laughs> what are you going to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you uh, you get through high school, and then did you join the service right out of high school? No, I went out. I actually wanted to start off as a pharmacist. Was accepted at uh, Detroit Institute of Technology College of Pharmacy in my junior year. Well, then uh, with the enrollment being somewhat down, Wayne State took them over. Mm -hmm. Well, Wayne State, uh, they had too many. I was on a waiting list for three years and no. So the next thing was is that uh, I was reading an article someplace about uh, uh, the medical field. So I went out and I found a small college pursued a degree in medical technology. Okay. And then from there, even going into the service, I was in the medical corps. So what uh, what made you join the service? Well, my number was coming up. At that time, we had to draft, yep. you know, and I knew, I called the uh, board, and he says, well, we can't guarantee this, we can't guarantee that. I was already a... Uh, second semester junior mm -hmm. and i says well would i get a deferment he says well you got to take some more courses well can't take it you know courses 
So I enlisted, and uh, that was it. Spent three years in El Paso. Okay. And now, where did you go to basic training? I went to basic training at uh, Fort Knox, Kentucky. All right. What was that like for you? Well, you know, I was, uh, let's see, I would have been in my middle 20s. So I was, I would say I was a little bit more mature than some of the younger kids. So I didn't have it that hard. Mm -hmm. I knew that they're playing mind games with you, you know, and until now, I, uh, I wouldn't knock what I got from basic training and anything else. Yeah. There's a lot of lessons learned there, right? A lot of lessons, mm -hmm. a lot of lessons, you know, and everything else. Is there anything for basic training that sticks out in your mind? That you learned while you the were there? The infiltration course. Okay, let's talk about that. Uh, you know, infiltration you were in, uh, you had to go through the dry run, you went through a wet run in daylight, mm -hmm. and it was a little scary. Because, you know, they, they warned you you don't get up or anything like that. And then the wet run at night, going through and seeing the tracer bullets go over your head, that was a little scary. So the infiltration training, that's where you're, is that where you're crawling? Up? You crawled on your, on your belly. Yeah. And sometimes you'd have to get on your back and get underneath the, uh, the wire. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the, the scariest part. Uh, I mean, some of the... Uh, uh, night problems, there was a fellow by the name of Pete Smarinski from Chicago. Him and I were always the, the point men. Mm -hmm. And he always warned you at the night problems, don't trip the trip wire because the flare would go off. <laughs> Pete and I were getting, we're about halfway through the project and the dummy uh, tracer bullets came in. We got scared, we tripped the, twi the wire. Uh -huh. He hit one side of the uh, post, banged his rib, ribs up pretty good, and so did I. But uh, like that, you know, hey, you learn by your mistakes. Right, right. And the whole time, they're firing these tracer rounds over top of you. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. pitch dark, and all you're seeing is them bullets go over your head, you know. Yeah. Sounds pretty realistic, though. Oh, it is. Yeah. It is. Yep. So you graduate basic training, and then um, what kind of training from, do you go from to? From basic training at uh, Fort Knox, I went into uh, medical training at uh, oh, geez. Fort Sam Houston. Mm -hmm. I took up uh, anybody with the MOS of a 931, which was a, a lab. You had to go through combat uh, basic training, medic. So I took... Uh, Let's see, four. I had four weeks of that, of the eight weeks, uh, going into the lab school over there. Uh, graduating, had OJT on job training at uh, Fort Belfort in Virginia. And uh, at that time, I already had my certification and boards as a medical technologist. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and working in a hospital up to that point, they wanted me to stay. Well, the Army knows better than anything. Request denied. Mm -hmm. I wound up going to El Paso, Texas. Um, looked on the map and where in the hell is El Paso? Well, Major Graham went out and he says, it's right here, son. He says, you're on the border, on the Mexican border. Mm -hmm. So that's where I wound up for two and a half years. Now, did you work at the medical clinic there or the hospital there? What did you do I there? Worked at, so you worked in the clinic, uh -huh. uh, William Beaumont General Hospital in El Paso. Okay. And anything exciting happened in El Paso for you? It was, uh, you know, again, uh, I was privileged enough to serve with all of us uh, that were in the lab, with a few two, uh, well, there was two sergeants that were, everybody else had at least two and a half years of college. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have, pardon the expression, the young, mature, immature kids coming up. Right. These were all people who knew what they wanted to do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you learn a lot yep. working in that clinic? Yeah. And I mean, I, I assisted at probably 
Oh, maybe 125 autopsies performed one by myself with a doctor assisting me, uh -huh. which I thought was great. And those were some, again, fond memories. Yeah. Must have felt good to be trusted enough to do that autopsy by yourself. Well, yeah, he, I mean, he was there, he sat down in a chair, he says, okay, Dick, he says, you and I have done so many, it's your turn. Uh-huh. And we followed the protocol, and it was, you know, I learned my anatomy right there, you know, it wasn't book learning. Right. It was actual. Right. Sometimes that's the best way to learn something. That's like that. right. Yeah. So you uh, you did that, and then it was time to, to then leave, I, leave the military? Then my discharge came up. Okay. Came back and I worked for uh, a small hospital here. I can't mm -hmm. remember which one. Oh, uh, so you came this you came back to Michigan. Yeah, got married left. the first time. Okay, and uh, came back, and like I say, worked in uh, oh, it was East Side General Hospital. That's what it was. It was I worked there till they closed that hospital. Mm -hmm. Uh, from there, I believe I worked at Sinai. And then I went into the service, came home, went to work for uh, St. Joseph Mercy Hospital on the boulevard. Uh, so you're still a lab technician this whole time? Oh, or? yeah. It was, okay. you know, it was... But you know, with that degree, it was a biochemical degree anyways. Uh -huh. And then it was uh, Garden City Hospital, where I was in charge of the blood bank. Worked at the VA hospital in Allen Park for a short period of time. Uh, my father-in-law from my first marriage went out, and there was a thing there that happened. Um, it was Christmas Day, I believe that I was on call. Mm -hmm. Well, my mom and dad got there to celebrate uh, Christmas with us, and the phone rang. Okay, I'm on my way. That was at 2.30 uh, in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I stayed there till 1.30 in the morning, the first call. Got home, my lovely wife had with dinner. The phone rang. I went back in again. Well, this went on all night. Was there I something going on that caused this? Oh, yeah. The, you know, when you're in the hospital, something goes wrong. You got patients going, yeah. you, got, you know. That's true. And uh, I finally, I think I left the hospital last time, was uh, maybe 6.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I told the receptionist, because at that time you signed out with the operator. And I got home, and I'm pulling in the driveway, and the wife goes out. She says, the hospital's on the phone. And I says, Sergeant, well, she says, we, we need you. Mm -hmm. I says, you know, I got a half hour drive time. I says, and that? I says, and Walt comes in at 7. I says, so it's senseless. She says, okay. So okay. The following day when I went back in, I had to sign into the chief pathologist's office, and the book was there. And he says, no. I says, what do you mean, no? He says, you refused the call. I says, wait a minute. I says, would you be so kind as go with me to the operator? She was just getting off. Mm -hmm. And she says, yeah. She says, you can see he's in here. Well, that took him to get resolved about two months, two and a half months to get my pay. They just stopped it. Right. Father-in-law went on. He says, well, he says, are you through with your white coat? And I says, yeah. He said, I'll see if I can get you into Chrysler's. Mm -hmm. Well, he got me into Chrysler's. I worked in a lab from the lab. Uh, that was the time that they were cutting back and everything else. They says, well, you're going to be laid off. Mm -hmm. So was, would this have been like the 70s then? Or were we that? That was before on? the 70s. Okay, so it's like the... 
probably 60s? in the early or late 50s, early 60s. Okay. okay, okay. So he got me into Chrysler's. Uh, unknown at that time was that his big boss is when I had owed my father-in-law big time. Mm -hmm. So that was my guardian angel. So from the working in the lab, I uh, got uh, they were tr saying that I was going to be laid off because I was a young low man on a totem pole. They got me for an interview at uh, Chrysler's in Highland Park. And he says, well, okay, you can come in and work in engineering. Well, like my father would say, he says, he made me an engineer. He says, I can't even spell it. <laughs> Sometimes so, you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah. yeah. It was, I worked in uh, engine development, and he went out and said, no, no, there's that. And uh, I says, I got to do something. So that, that stayed with Chrysler's. From the lab, then I went into uh, uh, engine development, engine development, then mm -hmm. into supplier quality or development. Right. At that time, uh, you know, young man, he says, oh, okay, you got a chemical background, we can trust you with something. Uh huh. Well, it started off that I had uh, maybe 12, 14 suppliers. Well, I'd known to me, the 12 that they gave me were the ones that the worst ones that they were going to get rid of. Oh. He says, okay, you go out and you see what you can do. Well, I took those 12, going from the rock bottom to some of the premium suppliers. So they went out and he says, okay. They kept on. So I got to be the rubber expert, tires, everything else. Mm -hmm. Took them. And at that time, they had Chrysler, I don't know how it is now, but we would have a uh, quality award. Uh-huh. Well, I'm not bragging or tapping myself on the back. I had the most suppliers with the Pentastar report. So that kept on going, going, you know. And, but they would never give me uh, a promotion to a, to a nine for a lease vehicle for mm -hmm. some apparent reason I don't know. And I think that I didn't really have an engineering degree. Right. I had a better biochemical degree. So I retired. I took a retirement, mm -hmm. and uh, then I went out and I, like I say, consulted. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed that. I mean, going back to Germany, I was based here in Detroit, Germany. And while I was at Chrysler's under supplier development is when I had a chance to go to South America, to Mexico. Wow. You know, so it's... Got to see a lot. I've seen an awful lot that I didn't <laughs> see when I was in the service. <laughs> right. You, uh, you got out of the service, then you saw the world. Yeah. 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 So, with your first wife, did you have children? I had four boys. Four boys. And sorry to say, I only talked to, uh, well, one religiously close by. The second one, he moved up into the UP. Mm -hmm. The other two says, we don't want anything to do with you, Dad. Uh, after the divorce, it was a bitter divorce. My first wife just bent their heads. Till this day, I only see two of them. Uh huh. The other two they didn't want nothing to do with me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's you know, but maybe before I take my last breath, I'll see them. But mm -hmm. like that, uh. -uh. Well, is it alright if we talk a little bit about them? Like what what do, what do they do and and okay. And that kind of thing? My oldest son worked. Uh, and in fact, uh, I got him that job. Uh, he was with one of the, my suppliers. From there, he worked it all the way up to working with, uh, I don't know if it was ITW or TRW. Uh, he's divorced now that I was told that. The second one is, uh, let's see, Richard David. The second son 
is the one that I'm close to. He lives in Trenton. Uh -huh. The third son is the uh, one that's up in the UP. Him and I made peace a long time ago. And then when he got married at a late age, I found a, a lady that they just fell in love and they moved up into the UP. But the youngest one who had the most severe form of club foot ever recorded in mm -hmm. medical history does not want to even hear my name. He oh. says, I don't want to see you. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to see you on the face of the earth. And that was, oh, let's say 30 years ago. Okay. Do you know what he's doing today? Do you know anything about him? Uh, the youngest one that doesn't want anything to do with me is a parole officer mm -hmm. up in Benton Harbor or St. Joe's. Uh, Steve, the one that's up in the UP, is a, uh, a cook and uh, he's doing real good. Mm -hmm. Number two, David is working for uh, he was with a Ford Motor Company as an engineer, and now I think he's working for Roush. But uh, that's it. And then my uh, oldest son is a, uh, and I think I'm spell uh, thinking right, he is on the board of directors, he might be part owner now of a scrap metal shop. So okay. he travels all over buying scrap metal. All right. So if you're, um, I don't normally ask this, but this is a great, I think this is an opportunity, so I'm going to ask. Um, you know, if your sons ever listen to this or, or watch the video, is there anything you'd like to say to them? Is there anything you'd like for them to hear from you? Um, I love them all. Okay. It's hard. Yeah. For a father to, you know, you raise them. It is hard. Yeah. And you love them all. Yeah. Okay. Well, I won't dig too deep in there. I know that that can be painful. I, my father and I had some troubles too, and we've, we've made our peace. But uh, thank you for being willing to, yeah. to share that. And hopefully they hear this message to them. So. Yeah. All right. So you, um, how many years did you work at Chrysler? With the points and everything else, uh, it was 20 years. Okay. So it was 20 years out, you know, whichever came first. Right. And at that time, uh, uh, they said it was a merger of equals. It was never a merger of equals. Mm -hmm. uh, shortly after uh, uh, Mr. Eaton and his infamous knowledge they started chipping away at us older timers. Right. And their thing being is, well, okay, we're going to buy you out. Okay, fine. Well, there was a fella that him and I were both uh, in the same situation where he got married the second time. And uh, he says, no, he says, I just got remarried. He says, and... Uh, my present wife has two children. One of them, the youngest one, just goes into high school. Let me have six more months, and then I'll take it. It wasn't no more than two weeks later. They walked up, and at that time, how you knew that you got the, the, the schnitzel was he would walk by and give you a Xerox box and tell you to clean out your desk. Mm -hmm. Well, here comes plant protection, and he gives him his box, and that's it. And I can vividly remember, just before I retired, how many of these guys, he shut down the complex so that if you didn't have a working badge, you didn't get in on a complex. Right. Well, Joe got the, the schnitzel. There was another fella that uh, he could have retired five years before. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, come to find out afterwards, he was a, a landlord of eight 
income things. Mm -hmm. All his kids were separate, you know, taken care of. But no, he wasn't about to, and he fought it. And uh, while they finally, I heard it from one of my uh, cohorts, is that, yeah, they forced him out on a technicality. Wow. So, I mean, there's, to me, it's a little bad feeling at times with Chrysler's, you know, mm -hmm. the way things they did. But I got out before on my own, whereas some of my buddies did it. They got the, here's the box, get out. Right. The schnitzel, yeah. as you call it. And the yeah. first guys getting out, the Xerox box was free. Uh huh. The second group of waves, you give us a dollar for that box. And you couldn't take that box up through the gate. Plant protection kept it. They went through it, and then they would call you in to come and pick it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make sure you weren't taking anything that didn't belong to you. You couldn't right? even have a pencil that says Chrysler. Anything yeah. that had Chrysler, and you know yourself, Chrysler, Ford, GM, you always had a pencil or a stapler or something. Right. No, you couldn't have any of that. Wow. So it sounds like you got out just in time. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. Uh, you went into consulting. I went into consulting and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a challenge because, you know, the winner, how it came out is uh, we had a tele teleconference or a telephone, and he says, okay, can you be in Germany tomorrow? I says, hey, I don't know. I got my passport, but that's it. I says, can I? So, yeah, you know, but uh, they spoiled me rotten. I yeah. flew Lutanza mm -hmm. first class. The only way to travel, Dick. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. So how long did you consult for? How long did you do that? Probably five or six years, okay. you know. And after that, uh, what happened is that the company I was uh, consulting with had a big contract with Chrysler, so that's where it was. Mm-hmm. And then when that uh, contract sort of fell through, that's when he went out and he says, no, you can handle uh, Caterpillar, which mm -hmm. was a big account. So I went back and forth. Then he went out and he says, hey, we're cutting back. And I says, well, that's good. I enjoyed the five years I had with you people and everything else. And mm -hmm. if I had a chance to do it again, you damn right I would. Sounds like a great experience. Yeah. Yeah. So then when you left there, did you, then you were re retired, retired? I retired completely. Okay, all right. And at what point did you meet Ginger? Ginger and I met on a blind date. Uh-huh. Uh, the fella that introduced us was uh, was Siemens. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was dating this one girl. And he says, well, he says, we have uh, tickets to go and see the... Uh, Nutcracker at Fox. Uh, up to the week before, or actually less than that, th three days before, uh, I almost called it off. Oh. Well, unknown to me at that time, Ginger went out, her nephew was graduating, and she was supposed to fly out. Mm -hmm. And we hit it off from there. And we just, hey, that to me, Sorry to say, yes, I love my first wife, but Ginger was the best thing that ever came along. Mm -hmm. And I only wish that I would have met her before I met my first wife, which right. is, sorry to say, if my kids hear it, hey, I loved your mother, but she just called sometimes, it quits. Sometimes things just don't work, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's understandable. Yep. And so... Uh, in your re in your retirement and uh, in your time with Ginger, did you you lived locally here in Michigan then? Yeah, we lived in. Uh, we got married, lived in uh, Roy Oak. From Roy Oak, uh, we went out and bought a house in White Lake. Mm -hmm. And at that time, everything was going along good. Sorry to say, I don't care for Obama. He can walk in this door right now and. Out he goes. We lost our house that we built. That was our dream. Mm -hmm. So then we moved from uh, White Lake 
to a condo in Oscoda where we were for, what, 12? Ginger would know for sure. Mm -hmm. But let's say 12 years, and then after her, well, she had more of a medical problem than what I did. Uh, like I say, it was just a little bit too far for the kids to drive that three hours. Right. So then now you're here in Heartland. Yep. Yep. Okay. Enjoying it. Let's enjoying it. You got it. You, you worked hard your whole life. You should enjoy it, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, Dick, it's been great talking with you. And um, as we... As we wrap things up, our conversation up today, uh, I always ask people this question, and that is, you know, years from now when someone uh, listens to your story, what message would you like for them to take from this conversation today? Love one another and be honest. Don't lie. Don't try to change the facts. Interpret Maybe that's my only downfall is I interpret the gray area. Mm -hmm. I cannot stand lying. And anybody that lies, I just don't want anything to do with them. I won't dislike them, but I will not do business with them. To listen to this full story or to hear the stories of other veterans, go to www.veteransarchives.org and click on the Media tab.